last time on HTML Canvas. Radu didn't use the canvas at all. Hmm. He just loaded some audio files in JavaScript and made the system to play them when pressing buttons on the keyboard. Now get ready, next lesson's about to start. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. Today we're gonna use everything we learned in this course. And I'm starting off with an empty file here, but I have another file in the same folder, and I'm gonna ask you to make it yourself. You will need to copy the draw snowman function and the draw hat function from lecture 5. We don't need to copy the grid drawing function from there, just to be able to draw the snowman, and it needs the draw hat function because the snowman has a hat. So have this file here in the same folder where we are going to start coding next. And here we begin to define a canvas with ID my canvas like this. And I'm going to use a background of um, the blue color that we used in lecture five as well. And the width and height of 400 by 400 like this. Now I'm going to include this JavaScript file that we have in the same folder. So I will write script source is equal to snowman.js like this and I'm going to close the script tag and now in this new script tag I'm going to write the code of today. We begin to access the canvas context, the 2D context like this. And now let's use our typical way of animating things. So I'm writing here animate and a function called animate is going to clear the whole page, clear the whole rectangle uh, of the whole canvas size on each frame. And then what I'm going to do is call the draw snowman function at these coordinates with this size. So these coordinates, I remind you, are for the bottom ball of the snowman, the x, the y, and the radius of that one. And the last parameter here is going to be the scale factor that tells you how quickly the next balls on top are going to decrease in size. So I'm going to say here, 70% decrease each time. And we want to loop this inside of the request animation frame and calling animate again and again and again, like so. Now save the file and refresh the page and you're gonna see the snowman on a canvas of 400 by 400 with the blue background. This particular blue color that we found using the website from earlier and the snowman appears here as we expect. Now this is animating, it is redrawing it many, many times per second, but we don't see much happening here. And we will, I'm going to make this snowman uh, have eyes that move, but for that we need to focus on the face first. So I want to draw this snowman so that the bottom ball is gonna be quite big and somewhere at the bottom of the screen, and here inside of our canvas region, we primarily focus on the head. So I'm changing these um, values here to be 640 and 160 for the radius of the bottom ball. Now, if I save this and refresh, you can see we have zoomed in on the snowman's head right here. Now I'm gonna start drawing the eyes and they are going to be dynamic. So I'm writing here a comment that we start to draw these dynamic eyes. And uh, begin path, and I'm gonna use first this arc method to just draw a circle in the middle of the canvas 
pretty much. Now, if I refresh this, I just have one dot there in the middle of the screen. But to have two of them, I'm going to export this 200 from here as a variable. I will say x is equal to this 200. And here I will use x minus 25, for example, a value for how far apart the eyes should be. And another one with x plus 25 there. And now when I refresh, I see two eyes for the snowman. These values here are just something I experimented with earlier, and I think they look nice. I didn't want to spend time doing it in this video. Okay, but a lot of redrawing on each frame and no animation happening. So let's go up here and say that we are going to specify a minimum x coordinate for the eyes. And this is going to be something like 170, so that we don't accidentally go too far away from the snowman's head and uh, the eye will be outside of its head. And uh, the range for this is going to be quite small. I'm going to give it a range of 60. So when the X is going to be at half the range, the snowman will look forward. It will have an X of 200, 30 plus 170. And here, let's use the same technique with a percent equal to zero by default. And I remind you that you can go in the animate function here and increase the P by some value like this and maybe bound it so that if it's greater than one, it becomes zero again. We did many tricks here previously, but I don't want to insist on this. And now we can use here instead of 200, the value of minimum X plus the range X multiplied by P. Save the file, refresh the page, and it looks like the snowman is reading. But uh, I want this to be dynamic so that I move the eyes or the snowman actually follows the mouse with its eyes. So let's try to do that. We don't want the speed to increase in this way, really. We are going to use the mouse move event listener from previously to get the value of P dynamically according to what the user is doing with their mouse. So here at the top, I'm going to write my canvas, add an event listener for mouse move. And the callback function will get some information from this event. And we can set the value for P according to the X coordinate coming from this info. So we get that X coordinate using offset X. Remember that margin that I showed you earlier. But this is a percent. So I want this to be between 0 and 1. And offset X will be between 0 and 400. So we need to divide this by the canvas width. And in this case, we divide by the 400, which is the canvas width specified up here and P is going to be between 0 and 1. So let's close this callback function from here and close this parenthesis from here, save the file, refresh the page, and now when we are moving the mouse on top of the snowman, it will look where the mouse is. It's kind of creepy, but also kind of funny at the same time. Now, I don't really like this code here because the eyes should be part of the snowman in the same way that the hat was part of the snowman. So I challenge you to take this code and put it inside of draw snowman somehow. And here, just pass this uh, P percent for how much the eyes are moving relative to the left side and towards the right. So you will need to add another parameter here to draw snowman after the scale factor and here implement a new function called draw eyes that takes that parameter and maybe the x, y, r of the head as well because the eyes should be proportional to the head. Now if we change the snowman size, uh, the eyes are going to be broken pretty much. But this is your homework. I'm not going to do this for you. 
Instead, I'm going to show you how to draw a bow tie that we can add as an image on top of the snowman. We're going to make it look like Leonard. So let me delete these in PowerPoint and I'm going to use this heart symbol again. I'm going to use shift. I'm holding shift so that this aspect ratio doesn't change. And now let me color this into red and uh, remove the outline. I will rotate this shape by 90 degrees counterclockwise. And if you hold shift, this is going to snap so it's easy to get the correct angle. And now I'm going to duplicate this by holding down control and dragging it to the right. But if I want to drag it so that I keep the vertical coordinate, the Y coordinate, I also hold shift down like this. Now I release, go to arrange, rotate, flip horizontal like this. And now I'm going to move this towards the left a little bit, maybe something like that. And I'm holding shift not to use this Y coordinate. And last, I'm going to select this rounded corner rectangle and maybe draw something here. Hmm. Something that looks like this in the middle part. And let's change this color to this dark red. I think it looks better. And, um, and remove the outline as well. And I think we're done. If you're bothered that maybe this is not perfectly centered here, you can select everything like this. Go to Arrange, Align, and then Align Middle. I think it made a small difference there. And if you want these to be aligned as well, you go Arrange, Align, and then Distribute Horizontally. But make sure Align to Slide is not selected, otherwise they will go far apart. So distribute horizontally now. It also moved it a little bit to the center. So with all of them selected, right click, save as picture, and in the folder that we are working in, call this bow.png and save. Now in Visual Studio Code, you should see your bow PNG here, like this. And inside of index.html, I'm going to refer to this image at the top and say constant bow is equal to new image. And the source of this image is equal to bow.png, like this. And to draw this, we are going to use the draw image method somewhere here after we are drawing the eyes. So ctx draw image and we're going to specify bow and then x, y of the top left corner of the image and then a width and a height. So for the x and y, maybe we are going to try something like uh, 150 for the x and then 230 for the y. And the width is going to be 100 and the height this is not a square aspect ratio, maybe something like 60. So let's save this, refresh, and it's almost perfect. I think it can go upwards a little bit. So maybe here to 20. A bit lower, 225. Nice. Let's add some text next. So I'm going to write here some text with a size of 40 and I'm going to use Comic Sans MS as the font. Not a joke. Let's also use the tricks for aligning horizontally to center and vertically to middle. And let's write here Mary, like this, at x of 200 and 310, maybe something like this. I want to center it in the bottom ball, I mean the center ball, because now the bottom ball is somewhere completely off screen. So, refreshing this, okay, 
that looks nice. So below that, I'm going to now write Christmas, even though it's April as I'm recording this. Nice. So I put this one a little bit lower than the word Mary there. And really, these two should also go inside of the draw snowman because this text now is also part of its body and the bow is also part of its body. So a really good code would be here to have draw hat, draw bow, draw eyes and draw text. But I'm going to leave you to do that and also figure out values for these that will work with any snowman size. It's not easy, but that way you really test if you learned from this course. And now we're going to use Audacity and my son's piano to record the song. Let me just trim this a little bit. All right, I'm going to save this inside our working folder and I'm going to call it song.mp3 like this. And now back in Visual Studio Code, I have the sound file right here and I'm going to go up and reference it like this. The song will be a new audio with song.mp3. And I need to add an event listener for pressing a button on the keyboard. I'm going to make it play when we do that. So I will write here document add event listener for key down and this callback function will have the info that tells the code of the key that we pressed. So if info.code is equal to let's say space then the song will play. That's it. So remember here to close both of these brackets. And now refresh one last time. The eyes are following the mouse. The snowman has a bow, an image, a text here. And when you press space, that's it for this beginner course. I hope you learned a lot and I'm dying to see what you create. You can host your projects on free websites like CodePen or GitHub and send me a link. Try pasting it in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter or Discord if that doesn't work. Sometimes YouTube comments don't appear for some reason. And let me know what you want to learn next. See you guys.